Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Can we stand in the, the house this morning and begin our service? Amen. Uh, we can set the tone right now for how this service is going to be. For somebody's miracle, it could begin right now with how we start it. So I want us to start it in really the best way that we can and by just offering up praise of thanksgiving that we're allowed to be here. There's, I can think of so many things I'm thankful for. Amen. We got a rain. We got more coming. We got so many things to be grateful for. Can we offer up praise? Can we be thankful? Can we worship with the praise team? And somebody's going to receive something this morning.
Hallelujah, church. We've praised him in song this morning. We've praised him with our presence. We've praised him by getting out of bed and showing up to the house of the Lord this morning. But I want to ask you right now if we could just praise him with our giving. If we could praise him by furthering the kingdom of God. If we could praise him by investing in heaven this morning. So if you could get the ways to give on the board. We have many ways that we can give here at the River Bend. We've got GiveLify and PayPal. We have the offering pans up here. The gold pans are for tithing and the wood pans are for offering. We have a way you can send cash and checks. You can send them in the mail to River Bend Pentecostals at P.O. Box 477 here in New Madrid, 63869. If you want to give this morning, just pick a way and you will be blessed. Pick a way and the Lord will return the favor. He will return what you have given to Him. He will make it. Come back. He will multiply it, Brother Blake. So if you would pray with me this morning, let's pray over this offering prayer, this declaration of faith. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings, and I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen.
come on, church. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of everything that we have inside of us. He's worthy in our lives when we didn't know it, when we couldn't see it. We have to be thankful. We have to give him all praise and all honor in this place today. Oh, the spirit is sweet in this place right now. The Lord's here and he's wanting to change somebody today. He's looking for something to do in you. We're going to move into prayer at this time. If you need something from the Lord, if you need a healing in your body or just a touch, and whatever you're going through, once you make your way to this altar today, step out in faith and know that he's going to change you inside and out. Just pray with me right now. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we just come to you so humble today, Lord.
something about the name of Jesus. There's no one higher, no one greater, no one like our God. Today, I want to tell you, I feel in my spirit very strong, very, very strong. I want you to know the Holy Ghost came today to take your load from you. But I have to tell you, that doesn't mean it's fixed. That means he's going to take it from you. I want you to know today, the Holy Ghost came. This service is an unloading service. Meaning whatever you're carrying, physically, spiritually, emotionally, the Lord wants to let you know he's going to take care of it. We, be, we ended last Sunday's sermon you can trust him with come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest and that same call is here today but you have to give it to him you have to give it to him grateful for everyone that's here all of our guests we have many that are sick today and uh power of the Holy Ghost is in this room. Amen. Amen. Power of the Holy Ghost is in this room. God bless you. You can be seated. Paul wrote over half of the New Testament. But before he was a missionary for Jesus Christ, Paul was religious. Now, I don't want to upset anybody's apple cart, but all religious means is you have a belief system. He was rooted and grounded in a strong belief system. A large part of that belief system was a limited perception of the ability of God to work in whoever he desired to. The limits were God only blesses certain people. God only blesses qualified people. And in their mind, to be qualified, you had to be born into the right family. You had to have the right blood. You had to have the right pedigree. Paul was a Roman citizen, most probably a member of the Sanhedrin court. He was a Pharisee. He was influential, he was charismatic, and he was connected. And the zeal of the Pharisees' mission of shutting down the message of Jesus Christ had caused Paul to be blinded. He was blinded by the zeal of the people he was surrounded with. They had one mission. No longer was it even, Brother David, to uphold the Jewish law, but it was to shut Jesus up and to shut the message of Jesus down no matter what. From all appearances of scripture, in private times and secret places, we all have them. I said we all have private times and secret places. But the way it appears Paul was at that time called Saul. He was tormented and troubled. He burst onto the biblical scene as the ringleader of a mob of people that made up a lie to accuse one of the seven deacons named Stephen. Ah, help me right now, Holy Ghost. This is connected to elements class unintentionally by me, but intentionally by God. They had to create a false narrative. They had to create a lie. They had to create a false narrative because they could not resist the wisdom and the spirit that was speaking through and working in Stephen. 
They could not discount the power of the Holy Ghost working through him and on him. They could not shut him down. They could not refute it. And they could not deny the power of the Holy Ghost that worked through him. So all they have left to do is make up a lie. So powerful was Stephen's witness in spite of the lies, in spite of the persecution, and ultimately the execution that Paul was unable to shake the effect that Stephen had on him. He couldn't shake the fact that everybody knows when you're facing a stoning in their case or a firing squad or an electric chair we might think about. You're not going to be doing it with confidence and compassion and love, but you're going to be fighting for your life. Brother Shannon, all he had to do was start saying, they're lying on me. I didn't do that. He All he had to do was to begin to defend himself, but he chose not to. He chose instead to let his last prayer be for them. Paul could not shake that scene as he stood there pompous and arrogant, proud and domineering the ringleader. They laid their coats down and that was because, come on Holy Ghost, that was because they got so worked up throwing stones at this this deacon, this man that only did good and only uh, prayed for people and they were healed and, and helped people be delivered. And Brother Shannon, so powerful were their stones that they got hot and had to take their coat off. Laid it at the feet of Saul. That was a gesture of respect, men. That was a gesture of respect because Paul was something special about this man. His response, please hear this preacher this morning, his response to the convicting power of Stephen's witness, which in itself was a work of the Spirit. Paul's response to feeling this conviction was to ramp up his efforts at persecuting and causing any that he found of the way they called it to be bound and imprisoned, some cases beaten and others killed. He couldn't help but see that for all the weapons being used against them, legal weapons, religious weapons, physical opposition, it did not hinder them. It did not slow them down, but in fact, these people that the hell has launched an all-out war against uh, seem to just be growing the harder they worked against them. Somebody ought to say, ah, amen. You mean to tell me that when the enemy goes to work harder against me, that that's an opportunity for God to grow me? I say yes. I say yes under the after. And somebody ought to get excited and say, you know what? There's been, whoo, there's been some trouble going on in my mind and some things going on in my heart and some things going on in my family. But God's got this. God's got this in control. And what the enemy meant for evil, God will use it for his good. It looked like the persecution was a blessing rather than a curse. In Acts chapter number 9, Luke, the writer of Acts, shared the initial conversion experience of Paul. It was on the Damascus Road at noontime that a bright light shone out, brighter than the sun at its highest point. And it was there Jesus reveals himself to Paul and gives him clear instructions to follow. He said, go to Damascus. There you're going to find a preacher named Ananias, and he will tell you what to do. That happens over and over again. If there was ever evidence for going to church and paying attention to the preaching, this is it. I want you to know the preaching of the word will change your life. The preaching of the word is changing my life, Sister Maria. The preaching of the word is good for what ails you. Matter of fact, the Bible said he chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. This conversion experience Paul shared, this testimony of the power and mercy of God in his life never lost its effect upon Paul. 
And I challenge you today, if you want to call this the first point of this message, don't you ever forget what God has done for you. Don't ever let the devil diminish it. Don't ever let the devil make it something that it wasn't. Don't ever make the, let the devil try to even embellish it and make it better. It was good enough, just like it was, for God to loosen you what he wanted. In Acts 22, a mob of Jews have taken Paul prisoner. And they brought him before the authorities. And Brother Richard, they want to try to get him killed. Ultimately, they got to do everything they can to shut truth up. It's here that Luke records Paul's first testimony of his miraculous call to be converted, to be baptized in Jesus' name, to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and to preach the gospel throughout the world. I, I, I thought about this, and, and I really feel a little hesitancy in the spirit, but do you guys... And gals understand that all that happened at the same time? Paul got his call, conversion, and his purpose all in the same first encounter with the Lord. Yep, somebody ought to be saying, wow, and say, I've been waiting, and I've been hoping, and I've been looking, and the truth is, Brother Austin, the plan of God, we've learned this, has been in place since before the world was created. I know that don't jive too well in our Pentecostal tradition, but I want you to know there's a revival of Paul-like conversions that's coming to the house of God. That's going to hurt your feelings. It's going to cause you some consternation and some trouble. But be prepared for God to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost on Sunday and then be winning souls by Monday. I got to let you know something. It's an honor to be involved in platform ministry, to play an instrument to praise, sing, play the drums. And old Noah, boy, he's doing good on them drums. Man. That's what I'm talking about. But there's a greater honor in ministry. It's the one sitting at somebody's kitchen table and opening the Bible. And whatever has been keeping them up at night, you're about to show them what they're looking for. You have to believe with all of your heart that if God put you in somebody's path, it was because he saw something in them that nobody else saw because he heard their crying and their weeping in the secret places in private times. Ironically enough, Paul begins to tell about what the Lord has done and when he got to the part of his testimony, you're welcome to read in Acts chapter 22, when he got to the part of his testimony where he said, the Lord told me to go down to the Gentiles and preach to them that the Jews shut him down. They begin to holler and drown him out with cries. Listen to what they said. Away with this fellow from the earth. It is not fit that he should live. All because he said, God's going to reach out to somebody you don't like, somebody you don't approve of, somebody that you've been taught your whole life you're better than. Why y'all looking at me like I'm crazy? This ain't nothing new. I've been preaching this since I come onto the, the, the platform and stood behind this pulpit. God is reaching for people who we've rolled off. God is reaching for people who the society has written off. God is reaching for people that you've called enemy. God is reaching for people that you've been afraid of. 
Come on now. God is reaching for people. I'm happy to tell you, Brother Billy, based on your comments, uh, God's going to use us uh, to reach into the people and reach into the places uh, that we were once afraid of, intimidated by, once that we uh, walked around. But God is going to use you to reach into them. I mean, oh, Holy Ghost, help me right now. The ministry of Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is about to be loosed in this house. Let me tell you something. In the Holy Ghost, I feel it on me right now. That unloading that I'm calling you to do today, that's what's holding you back. It's not waiting on the will of God, and it's not waiting on the will of people, but you can't help anybody else dragging your own rock. Let God take over your problems. That's what he wants to do. Yeah, and it feels just about like it does right now when I'm telling myself that. Because, Brother Shannon, I still got to fight off that desire to be God. I still got to fight off the desire to be the fixer. And, Brother Richard, the Holy Ghost keeps telling me, that's my job. That's my job. And you beat your head against the wall trying to fix the, uh, a spiritual problem with fleshly means. Hmm. They said when he started telling that the Gentiles were going to get the message, Brother Bucky, they said, got to shut that stuff up. We got to keep this unique and special. And at the whole time, Brother David, they don't even have it themselves. They're still, oh, Lord, they're still dancing to a song that went off the charts several days ago. They're still trying to resurrect an old way of doing things that died when Jesus hung on the cross. Huh? Ooh, it's not a new thing because the Lord said in the book of Zechariah that the prophet spoke to old Zerubbabel. It's not by might and not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. That's how it was always planned to happen, and that's how it's going to happen. I'm not telling you to come unload because I feel sorry for you. I'm telling you to come unload because I need you. I'm telling you to come unload because the Lord needs you, and he's got big your plans than just lifting your load and just fixing your problem. Yes, I look to you all across this building. You're needed in the kingdom of God. The kingdom is better because you're here. That doesn't just preach good and that doesn't just mark it good. It is true. We're better because you're here. Oh, I'm coming to get some stuff this morning in the spirit. There's been a great move of the Holy Ghost here, but I want you to know it's time to stop going through the motions. One of the loads you've got to unload today is the bitterness that you feel toward this revival God has given us because he didn't put you in charge of it. The Holy Ghost says to you today that he needs you. You've always been supposed to be a part of this. The power of the God, the power of God that desires to move in southeast Missouri, you're supposed to be a part of it. But you've got blinded. You've got blinded by your own insecurities and your own desire to be elevated. And the Lord said, put your towel around your waist and kneel at the feet of a brother and wash their feet. He said, that is when you're elevated, is when you serve.
I'm going to say this. I'm doing it with my eyes closed because two reasons. One, I'm kind of chicken. And two, I don't want to thank anybody I'm looking at. But I want you to know, stop being bitter toward people struggling with addiction, recovery, and substance abuse disorder. I tell you right now, as your pastor and as your leader, every person under the sound of my voice needs recovery. Every person under the sound of my voice needs to recover from poor thinking, for needs to recover from past that have hurt you, need to recover from mistakes, need to recover from failures, need to recover from poor habits, need to recover from poor thought patterns. I tell you now, under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, he came to set you free. I'm telling you right now, please mean no disrespect to anybody, but there's more people that need to be recovered from poor thinking than there ever was any drug or alcohol. Is that all right? Is that all right? Huh? Woo! In case you're wondering, I got here about 6 o'clock this morning, and I've been in the Holy Ghost out here in this place, and I'm going to tell you right now, there wasn't enough devils in hell to distract me then, and there ain't enough devils in the pew to distract me now. I come to tell somebody the Holy Ghost is working in your life, and he ain't going to stop, and he will not be intimidated. So why don't you surrender? Surrender. It's in Acts 26, Paul gets another chance to tell his testimony. It's before the king whose name is Agrippa. The king said, boy, my daddy preached a masterpiece. I may have to pull the notes out sometimes. When the king told Paul, it's time for you to speak for yourself. And Paul said, I think myself happy that I can speak for myself. But when he was given an opportunity, he didn't choose, Sister Dana, to talk about how qualified he was. He didn't choose to talk about all the miracle signs and wonders that God had done for him. Sister Maria, when he stood before Herod, I feel Holy Ghost in here right now. When he stood before Herod, Brother Shannon, uh, he went back to the Damascus Road. <laughs> because if I can get you to believe in the power of God that changed me <laughs> when I didn't see a desire to be changed, <laughs> when I wasn't looking to repent, <laughs> but God saw so much potential in you that he shined out of heaven brighter than the sun and he began to minister to you as an individual. He chooses to speak of how the power of God worked in his life in his calling, in his conversion, in his establishment as an asset in the kingdom of God. It all happened at the same time. But Brother Shannon, like we talked about this morning, Paul didn't know it all. Because I will challenge you today to watch the evolution of his testimony. Nothing different happened in his past. He's not embellishing it. He's not lying about it. And he's not making it better. All that's happening is he's realizing more and more the magnitude of the work God did in that moment. He said to Agrippa, I was on my way to Damascus with the authority and commission from the chief priest. And it was at midday. And I'm shocked out of my mind. I ain't even been preaching about 20 minutes yet. And it feels like it's time to go. <laughs> he said, I was on my way to Damascus. I had authority and a commission from the chief priest. And at midday, I saw in the way a light from heaven. Above the brightness of the sun shining round about me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking to me in the Hebrew tongue. Now that may not mean much to you, but I'm going to tell you right now, when the Lord speaks to me, he speaks to me in English. You want to know why? Because Brother David, he wants me to know what he's saying. Because that's what I understand. Oh. 
And the Lord said, Saul, Saul, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now, the pricks is simply referring, you look it up in the original, it's referring to an ox goad. It's a, a long stick that has maybe a piece of metal, something solid on the end of it, and it is a tool that is used to poke and prod animals until they get on the path that they're supposed to be on, stay on the path that they're supposed to be on to get where they need to be. And what the Lord is telling Paul, he's saying when you can't sleep at night, when you're irritable and when you're frustrated and when you're having problems uh, surviving in life uh, and it, oh, every time you shut your eyes, uh, you just see the beautiful face of Stephen lifting his head and his hands up to heaven and asking God to have mercy on your soul. He said, all that is is me getting you on the right path, headed in the right direction and to keep you staying there. But he's telling him, Brother Richard, he's saying, you're kicking against it, but you found it hard. Right. Oh, I see your face today. Two people, especially that I'm speaking to this morning. You want to be a part of it so bad you can't stand it. You want to submit and you want to surrender. But it ain't happening the way you want it to happen. Nobody's come and said, we're going to make you the the king or the queen. But you want to be a part of it. And when you shut your eyes at night and you sit back there or you sit up here and the Holy Ghost moves and you cross your arms and you bow your neck and you decide I'm not going to be moved. Though inside Sister Maria, their heart is pounding. Inside they're crying out, I want to be a part of this. You're kicking against the gold. Because that's the power of the Holy Ghost trying to bring you into alignment. And that's what was happening to Paul. And his response was it was to ramp up opposition to the way. His response was to fight harder against what was calling him. To fight harder against what was calling him. And it was no longer fueled by religious zeal or tradition but now, Brother Ronnie, Paul's passion is fueled by fear. The fear that what these people are preaching is true. I'm getting ready to bring it home. You can come on up here so I don't forget. The Lord says it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. He's telling Paul. I know that you're burdened down with this confusion. I want you to know I did not come here to stop you from working. I came to redirect you. I didn't come here to shut you down or shut you up. I came here to recruit you. I came here to redirect your efforts and your zeal. What you have, I want it. What you have for the world, I want it. What you have for the opposition, I want it. I didn't come here to counteract the limited authority of the priest and the commissions that you came to Damascus with. I came to establish you in the authority of heaven. I came to establish you in the power of God Almighty. And Paul said, Who art thou, Lord? Acts 26 and 15. And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. And then the Holy Ghost is going to move in here right now. Because the Lord spoke to Paul words I'm speaking to you. But rise and stand upon thy feet. Here's what that means in the Holy Ghost. Crying time is over. You've laid there long enough. It's time to go to work. And we don't have a minute to waste. He's letting him recover all of about a minute from being knocked down by the light from heaven.
But then he said, we ain't got time to wait no more for you to feel sorry for yourself or people to feel sorry for you or to struggle what you're going through or to come up with a plan against this opposition. He said, it's time to stand up, boy. It's time to get up on your feet, boy. It's time to get rid of that load you've been carrying. I want you to, oh, I want you to know that that danger you've been feeling, that frustration you've been feeling, it's time to let it go. And you let it go by getting to work. Oh, come go with us. Come go with us. Come go with us. He said, I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. To make thee. Somebody said he wants to make me. That's not mean force you. That means shape you. That means put you on the potter's wheel and make you what he wants you to be. Look at here. Look at here. Both of those things which you have seen. And of those things into which I will appear to thee. You know what he's telling him, Brother Austin? He said, I didn't just show up so you'd get a Sunday morning tingle. I didn't just show up to put you in your place. He said, I showed up to establish something in you that's going to make your past make sense. And validate your future. Oh, Holy Ghost, help me. You know what he's saying, Sister Dana? He's telling him, boy, you think this is a big deal. You think this is something that's exciting. You think this, he said, just wait and see what I'm going to show you once you line up with me. It's the evolution of his testimony from salvation to sanctification to operation. All at the same time. He said, I'm going to deliver you from the people and from the Gentiles Unto whom now, stand with me. Unto whom now I send thee. Right then. Right then. Verse 18, he said, I'm going going to send you to them to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. And here's the most powerful words that Paul says. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. What does that mean? That means, Justin, that he had the opportunity to say no thank you. With all them goings on, with all the signs and wonders around him, he still had to submit himself and do what the Lord said. Even a call as powerful as this one had the element of submission. Because it wasn't just the call to go and be converted. It included the call to preach this same message of personal revelation to salvation and sanctification and operation of the Spirit of God in you. Look at 18 again. He said to open their eyes, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they might receive forgiveness of sins. Somebody say amen, I like it. And inheritance 
among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. I'm getting ready to quit. Are they helping you or are you singing all by yourself? Y'all better come on with your bad selves then. <laughs> he said, I want to open their eyes. I want to turn you from darkness to light. You know what darkness is? That even if your eyes open, you can't tell where you're going. So I'm going to open your eyes and I'm going to turn you from darkness to light. Think about it. He told him, Brother David, I was not disobedient to that heavenly vision. You know what was happening? You know what verse 18 says? I'm going to share the heavenly vision with you. Huh? I'm going to share the heavenly vision with you. You know what the heavenly vision was? Go preach the gospel. Go tell somebody what they got to do to be changed. I'm happy to tell you we're not in the ear tickling or ear itching business. We're not in the business of winning friends and influencing people. We're in the business of turning people around from serving the enemy to start serving the Lord. But you got to see it. Hear me right now. You've got to see your part in it. You've got to see yourself in that. You've got to see yourself in the heavenly vision. He told Paul, this is how I see you. This is how I see you. Paul said, and the Lord told Paul, your job is to preach the same message to everybody you come in contact with. I feel no hesitation in speaking to this entire body of believers. If you will today, hopefully at the altar, but in your seat, wherever you might be, trust him enough to unload. He'll fill you up and empower you to fulfill the heavenly vision. I could probably preach it, but Gideon, Brother David, was in a hidey hole. He was chicken. He was scared. He was threshing a little bit of grain, hiding from the enemy, and the angel of the Lord showed up in a bright light and said, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, got me mixed up. He said, I'm the lowest one in the lowest family in Israel. And the Lord said, oh, I know exactly who I'm talking to. But he had to unload that fear. And it was a process, Brother Shannon. It was a process. And it ended up being the thing that caused the fear to go away is the Lord let Gideon hear what the enemy was saying about him. What do you think the enemy's saying about you? Do you think he's saying, oh, they're no good, they're weak, they're, they're lifeless, they don't have... No, you know what he's saying? I got to keep them believing that lie. I got to keep them believing that they can't do what God said they would. This song's going to minister to you right now. I'm going to challenge you. I don't normally do this, and I beat, them, I beat it around all day, but I'm going to tell you something. Come here, Justin. I know you don't like being in front of everybody, but I didn't warn you because you told me no. <laughs> Ain't that right? Yeah. <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday. Now, I didn't understand this, but I looked at the 12-hour prayer list, and from 1 o'clock till 6 o'clock, there was like these little bitty letters off in the far corner, JC, 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 all the way down. Now, i got to tell you the truth. I thought one of these kids done wrote their name down on everything. Until Justin came to me and said, that was me, and he didn't do it to get bragged on. Matter of fact, he's probably mad at me right now. <laughs> but I want you to know from 1 o'clock yesterday until 6 o'clock last night, Justin went over in that prayer room and built him an altar, and he filled every one of those eyes praying. <laughs> Let me tell you, not so we would brag on him, but because there's been something pulling in his heart that said, I can do something for God. I can do something for God. And I'm willing to pay the price to make that happen. I want you to know I love you and I'm proud of you. Not because what you did. I'm proud of you because you answered the call to the heavenly vision to come be a part of the river bend. I'm glad that you came here and said, I want you to be my pastor. I'm glad God had grace.
grace and mercy to send Justin to the river bend. And I'm glad that God had grace and mercy to send every one of you to the river bend. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much? Oh, to let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Oh, do you feel that empty feeling? Because shame's done all its deal. Shame. And you're desperate for Come on, it's time to unload. Just let the Lord have let it. Me tell you about my Jesus. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor.
Amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just give him some praise one more time. Hallelujah, Lord. I love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jill for that word this morning. I needed that. I needed, I, I needed to hear that. Praise God. I'm so thankful for everybody here this, this morning. So thankful for what God's doing at the river bend. What he's continuing to do. Amen. Amen. There's going to be one hour of prayer tomorrow night at 630. There's a prayer meeting scheduled hanging on the bulletin board in the foyer. There will be no prayer meeting next Monday night due to July 4th. Next Sunday, July 3rd, will be the next Secret Sister drawing. Church cleaning this week is team number nine, Sister Maria, Brother Coe, and Sister Callie. Junior camp is going to be July the 11th through the 15th, ages 8 through 11. Remember all these, all these announcements. Anybody have a birthday or anniversary this week? I'm going to put my money in. I had a birthday this past week. Got a little older. Amen, amen, amen. that had an anniversary stand up. Brother Bucky, come on now. <laughs> Anybody have anniversary or are they all birthdays today? Birthdays. Everybody had a birthday stand up they're going to sing to us. Praise God. Praise God. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday. with me today. Praise God. Brother Blake dismisses some prayer this morning. 